Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to set up a game of Pulsar 2849, or as I would call it when I was calling around to the local game stores, Pulsar some number after that. And <laughs> I would always have to look it up because I can never freaking remember that number. Um, I'm going to be setting up a two-player game, but if you want to learn, learn how to set up the other player account, that's totally fine. We're going to be doing that too. So, let's go ahead and crack this open. First of all, I want you to notice that this artwork is very cool looking. Uh, I really like the feel of this. I, I really like white, I don't know, kind of the whitewash feel of this looks really pretty or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so really cool looking box. We're gonna crack it open and what we've got here at the top is the rule book. And you know, I felt like this rule book was pretty good. I was, for me, I was really happy with uh, the way that this rule book was written and laid out. So big fan of that. Um, I'll probably keep it close by uh, because they have a nice uh, icon index here on the back, but really I thought their iconography was pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Um, they also have this book that will uh, talk about the technology tiles in case they get confusing, but again, for me, I feel like it was pretty straightforward uh, and not too tough. Uh, you may notice the camera's pulled back pretty far. Uh, you're going to see more of my body than usual. <laughs> That's because this takes up a lot of space. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the board. Now this board has two sides. kind of has a beginner side and an advanced side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the advanced side. And the way you can tell is, uh, where is it? It's on the zero. So if you look, oh my gosh, <laughs> here at the zero, you're going to see that there's nothing on that side. But on the other side, there's a little star. Oh, <laughs> this is so hard. Uh, that little tiny star right there uh, is going to show you kind of the beginner's things that you can do. Uh, mostly I plan on using the beginner side, but everything else I'm going to do like a regular um, setup. So, yep, there we go. Go ahead and set up the board. I'm just making sure we have enough space on camera. I'll probably be shifting things around. As per usual, I have added a few things to help with the organization of this game. I really hope that somebody comes up with a good insert soon because, wow, this stuff is rough. Um, but basically, I have three geek boxes. I meant to have four, but I ran out of one, so I just am borrowing one from uh, Scythe when I got that. So um, we're going to have that. Now, I'm going to be playing blue versus red. I know, you're surprised, right? And then uh, we also, in a two-player game, are going to need a third player color. So I'm going to pull out this green as well. Uh, we're not really playing with those pieces, but they're going to mark a couple of things for us in a two-player game. Okay, so I don't need this. All right, now what we've got here are a bunch of boards. And traditionally, these all just surround this really nice round board. Um, for filming purposes, I'm probably going to be laying out a bunch of stuff facing the camera over here instead of having everything around the board because I just wouldn't have the space to do that. So in this whole pile of big uh, gizmos and gadgets of plenty, um, one thing we've got here are some headquarters. And so there are four different headquarters, A, B, C, D, and they are labeled with a side one and a side two. And we're going to just go ahead and pick semi-randomly. I think I'm going to try my best to keep with the colors. So this one looks very blue, this one looks pretty red, that one looks kind of green and yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and just take these and let's just use the sides that are there. So my blue player is going to be playing on, you can see this A2 side, and B1 is going to be playing on this side. And that'll offer some nice variation between our two players. So we're going to pull those ones out. Uh, these are just some really light player aids. They're, they're very papery. Um, and so on one side, there's a round overview. On the other side uh, is going to help us with uh, end of game scoring. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep two of these out. Uh, we might use those in the video. And the things that we're not using, I'm just putting back in the box as we go. Okay, what we've got here, this is a big one, is going to be um, kind of our dice tracker. And this game is um, a dice drafting game, which I've been really into lately. I'm loving Sagrada, love role player. Um, and you know, there's like Unearth and Sentient and stuff like that. I really am liking dry dice drafting, uh, which is why I'm doing this video. So on this side is four players and this other side is gonna be for two or three. And so we're gonna go ahead and place this right here at the top and I'm gonna make it nice and pretty, and this just fits perfectly around the crown of the board like that. I know this looks off center. Like I said, that's because I'm planning on putting some stuff over there. 
All right, a couple of other things. We've got this board here, uh, nothing on one side, just really pretty artwork. And on the other side, this is going to hold um, the uh, gyrodones. Gyro, gyro, gyrodones. We're going to put this on the board anywhere. It just fits around somewhere. I'm going to put it like that, I think. Now, what we've got here are, um, I think these are technology tiles, if I remember, but they're going to also track our rounds. <clears throat> there are three different shapes, two of each shape, and they're all double-sided. So tons of variety coming in, and I like that a lot. So, uh, for example, we'll show you these. They're all labeled A, B, C, D, so we have A and C, and then on the other side, uh, B and D. And the number one is showing you where that belongs. So uh, typically, put that over, this would just fit on the side of the board like that. But because the information on this is pretty important for gameplay, my plan is to detach that and put it sideways uh, like that. So it won't look as pretty, but we just need one level one one level two and i'm literally just picking these totally at random um they do recommend oh that's a level three they do recommend that you start off with all of the a sides for those three levels for your first game um but in that case it kind of diminishes a little bit of the headquarter usage because also for your first game they recommend you don't use the headquarters but i think we can handle this um so what did i just pull out oh yeah that was a three so now i need a two one uh, looks like we're gonna go for D2. Okay, so again, normally this would look like this on the board, which is very cool looking, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and tip that sideways for recording purposes. A little something like that. Okay, um, what else have we got? We need three goals. So these are gonna be end game scorings. Um, so there are six of these, they're all double-sided, and we just need three that are totally random. I don't know how to shake this up randomly. <laughs> so we're gonna pick this one, this one, and this one. And once again, these just fit around the board, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and put these, I think, like that. And as always, I might shift things around, uh, depending on the needs. All right, so what else have we got? so many things it's a little crazy okay we got these dice so these dice are um cool there's silver and then red we definitely need the red one and in a four player game you're going to use all nine of these dice but in a two or three player game we're just going to be using seven so i'm going to just take those put them there like that and then the rest of these go back in the box We've got some exploration tiles. Now this game did come with a bunch of bags. Uh, they were all the same size and they were pretty big, so I've kind of pulled out of my own bag storage and I have some small ones and some big ones, but uh, there are these exploration tiles. <laughs> I'm struggling to get them out. And we're gonna actually need all of these. And on one side, they're gonna have these bonuses. Sorry, that's hard to see. These bonuses. And on the other side, just looks like a blue planet. Uh, you'll see why in a little bit. But we're just going to kind of gently shuffle these. These are pretty much already mixed up. Uh, we're going to have something like that. And let's put this on the board. Let's put it over here. That looks neat. All right. Next up, we have these um, planetary system tiles. So these are kind of like different solar systems. And on one side, you're going to see uh, several planets and then maybe a bonus with a sun around it. And so we're going to just take these and these are going to go on the board randomly. Just trying to shuffle them up here. Um, OK, uh, move the box up this way. All the dice are going to start in the middle, which is called the black hole like that. And then we're going to just take these planetary systems and just put them around the board randomly. And you'll notice I'm avoiding these things right here are called pulsars. So I'm avoiding those. We're just putting these on the sunspots. And I think we're going to have one left over if I remember right. Yes. Okay, so we've got one left over. I'm going to keep it nearby because I plan on using this uh, in the rules explanation. Uh, yeah, either way, back in the box, but kind of nearby. Oh, let me move the dice for a second. Okay. And now, next up, we've got these, um, oh crap, what are these called? These aren't technology tiles, these are, uh, starts with an E, I think. I can never remember all the fancy words. 
These are called something. Oh, transmitter. <laughs> so not even an E. All right, so these are a whole stack of transmitter tiles, and you're going to see that they have letters on uh, one of the sides. And that's, uh, I was going to say, you, could, you can usually look for the sides to see if there's like a black half die here, uh, but that's not necessarily the case. So we have all these tiles, and we need to split them up into letter groups. So these are all C, and then we have B, oh, another C, like that, B. You can see this is such a table hog and kind of a lot of setup. Um, this game is pretty simple once you get the hang of it, but there are a lot of things to know uh, before you get started on the game. So here's A, B, 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 A. Now the order these come out uh, need to be randomized, kind of. So this is kind of one of those things where C's uh, go with this side up, the side where you can see the letter. So we're going to start with C's. Where should we put these? Um, I don't know. Here-ish. Okay. C's and then B's. We're going to shuffle these up and put them on top. And then A's. Like that. And then we need three to start off the game. So what if we go one, two, three, and probably put them like that. And as per usual, again, uh, I might change where all of this is, but that's where I'm planning on putting them for right now. Nice. Okay, now, you know me, I love my Plano boxes. Oops, I just messed up down there. Oh, and then there's one more tile that needs to go on the board. It's going to go hmm, over here. Okay, so we're going to put these here, explorations uh, near it, like that. All right, so Plano, you could do different things. For the video, I'm probably going to unpack the Plano box, but you could just play straight out of the Plano box if you're uh, being careful. But we're mostly done with the box here, so let me get that out of the way and adjust these planetary systems I actually knocked off, like that. And what we're going to do is, uh, I have this sorted, where we have these different um, gyrodons <laughs> uh, sorted. So these ones in this have a one in it, these have a two, these have a three. And then we have dice modifiers as well as our median tracker. So our median tracker I'll just put up here for now. And I also have these kind of um, bonuses. Uh, these are gyrodone bonuses. There's a seven and a four of each kind of gyrodone. So you're going to put the seven on top of the four. And for the ones we put them right here. For the twos, seven and a four. These go right here. And yeah, that's still on camera. Okay. And then seven and a four. These go right here. And then I'm just going to grab these out of this Plano box. This Plano box really is the perfect size because things pretty much stay stacked. Uh, so I'm going to just grab these ones and they're going to go on that spot. Grab these twos. And again, let me just hold this up in case it's not clear why I'm saying the number two. So twos. And you'll see these have two sides, a white side and a dark side. Uh, these are the under construction side and these are the uh, functioning side. So we're just going to put it on the under construction side. And it doesn't matter. We're just literally just splitting this pile in half. It doesn't matter. This is just a stockpile of all of these. And then grab our threes. And same thing. Threes go right here. Like that. And then what we've got are um, these different dice modifiers. So the blue ones have a plus or minus one pip. And so we can just kind of stack these on this part. Uh, the purple ones go over here. So we're just going to kind of sort these out. Again, I usually, honestly, would probably just play straight out of the box and keep the Plano box over near here. But that wouldn't look that nice on video. <clears throat> okay. So blue, purple... Blue, purple, blue. Do you like watching YouTube videos where people teach you about blue and purple? Okay, so there's that. And then finally, we have a whole bunch of energy cubes. Now, these, ugh, I would just keep these and play out of here. But that might be, might not be so pretty. Mm, where am I going to put these? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so basically we have 
done with the Plano box. We have these, which are essentially change. Uh, if you have four cubes, the cubes are supposed to be kind of unlimited. So you can exchange the four cubes out for these. So let's, how about this? We're gonna, we're gonna move these goals over to the other side. We're gonna put these up here, these here, and our cubes there. Bring our dice back over here. And this triangle here is our round tracker. So it's gonna start down there. Oh, this pile is so big. Um, yep, here's what we're gonna do. Sorry, swap this. Welcome to setting up this game. <laughs> kind of a lot of stuff, but that's why we do these setup videos. So you can kind of see, get a feel for how long it actually takes. Um, no cutting here. You kind of can see the goods and the bads of a game setup. All right, we're gonna put these like that. And then we'll bring our energy cubes down this way. Here we go. Okay, now that was more or less the general setup. Now we need to deal with the player board setup. So uh, let's just kind of carefully, yep, yep, you're seeing the way I hold my tablecloth together. It looks really good. Bring this over this way. I'm going to swap sides, which is more complicated than it sounds. <laughs> I'm all wired in over here. Okay, and let's just make this look better. So we got our player aids, our end of game goals. I'm gonna just put these right here. Now, we're just gonna need to keep these green ones. Mm, I'm gonna keep them off camera probably, uh, but we're gonna be using these tokens uh, during the game. So we'll just put these here-ish. And then next to our headquarters, we've got a couple of different things in here that we're gonna need. And my plan is to just keep these round, very cool plastic bits. Uh, I'm just gonna keep these in here for safekeeping. And I'm gonna pull out these rings. I can't remember what these rings are, but they're gonna go around the pulsars. So we're gonna keep the rings out and about, make it look Olympic-y. How about that? Something like that. And then also, it'll be a little tricky to track down. We're gonna, there are three ships in here. And in a two player game, we need all three ships. If this was a three or four player game, we would only need two. And we have a 100 and 200 point uh, tracker. So if by chance you pass that point amount, you can keep track. I'll just keep that in here for now. Well, here, I'm gonna fish that out, put it under the lid. These things are going there. No, uh, almost on the lid. These things are going, that's stupid. Okay, we'll just keep that near, no, we'll keep that in here. We don't have it, we don't wanna use it. All right, so, ugh, this is stupid. Here's what we're doing. Those bits go in there, and this goes under in case we ever use it. There we go. Okay, three ships, put those over there. Uh, yep, those are there for now. Let's switch sides, set up blue. Over here, oh, ugly, don't look, don't look. Okay, and again, like always, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of shifting to make sure that everything fits in a proper place. All right, blue, we don't need yellow, back in the box. Okay, so for blue, same thing. I'm gonna pull out all of these rings, and we could splay them out nicely if we wanted to or not. Oh, let's go ahead and dump these tokens into here. Like that. Find our three ships. And blue player is set up, ready to go. Except for our ships. All right, so our ships. Let me re... Oh, camera. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. Oh, that looks really good. <laughs> or not. Okay. Uh, so our three ships. Here's how this is going to work. <clears throat> we need to... I, my leg is totally wrapped around the tripod right now. So first thing... Oh, I need these player tokens. They're going to mark our score. So we're going to put one of each. A little red. Okay. So we're starting at zero points right there. Then we need to start our ships on different places. So if you were playing, what you would do is establish player order, and there's different ways of doing that. I think most people would just take one of each color ship if this was three or four player, and you'd shake it up, and then you would just assign them a player order on those triangles. Um, but for me, I'm gonna go blue player first, 
I think that's what I usually do. Uh, blue player first, so he's going here. And in a two player game, you're using both ships. So if blue's going first, then we're gonna go red, blue, and then red, like that. Yep. okay. So we go ahead and set up our player order for the start. And then our other ships, we need to decide where they're starting. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate this. So let's just start blue over here near blue. And we're going to start red over here near red. Like that. And there, you know, there is strategy to what you're doing, but I am not going to be doing that now. And um, last thing we need to do is we need to grab in a two player game four of each player's tokens. Um, if this was three or four players, you would just grab two of each token. Uh, but basically, we're going to be setting them up right here in the middle in reverse player order. So let me grab these red ones. And we need to do that two places. So for example, red is going to be the last player. Oops. So to set it up in reverse player order, I'm going to be putting blue on the bottom on both of these stacks. And then we're going to be putting red on top of that. I am sure that I am completely blocking everything, aren't I? Probably. <laughs> but you see what I'm doing. Okay, so blue, let me point it out. Blue was on the bottom, and then I put red on top, and then I'm putting blue again, and then red on the very top. So I have two stacks in reverse player order. So player order was blue, red, blue, red. And so these different tokens are stacked up here. Oh my gosh. These don't stack well, but they don't stay stacked for very long. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, almost there. Almost there. Reaching. Can I do it? Yeah. You probably couldn't see that. I'm guessing my whole head was like right here. I'll find out very soon when I edit this video. Okay, so again, so player order was blue, red, blue, red. And so these chips are in reverse order, so they're red, blue, red, blue. And then uh, we're gonna deal with rolling the dice um, at the beginning of the game. And each player also is gonna need one of these blue uh, plus or minus tokens. So let's just put those over there. And just because there are so many things going on, let me just triple check and make sure that we got everybody their stuff. Um, yeah, yep, okay, we're good. All right, that's it. We are set up and ready to play Pulsar at that number, 2849. Uh, get excited. This game is kind of dice drafting advanced style. I'm excited to play for sure. All right, we will see you in the gameplay video. I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you then. Bye!